Thank you, thank you, and uh, welcome everyone to, uh, to this uh, international technical webinar. Today we will be talking about water management for climate smart agriculture, and more specifically on the water, energy and food nexus. Uh, let me start by introducing myself. I'm Christina Petraki and I head the FL eLearning Academy. Uh, just a few more words. I wanted to mention that this is one of a series of, uh, of webinars that we organize together with the United Nations Economic and Social uh, Commission for Asia and Pacific, together with our uh, French colleagues from Agrinium. And uh, I also wanted to mention that the various thematic areas of our webinars are all related to the global challenges that we are all facing. And uh, in addition, there are always um, some very um, specifically related uh, FAO e-learning courses on all these thematic areas that we cover. So I would like to invite you all uh, to the FAO e-learning academy that offers over 350 uh, e-learning courses and to have a look at the related courses of the webinar that we will be uh, delivering today. We will be also uh, towards, we will be also mentioning uh, th those courses, so it makes it easier for you to access them directly. Uh, so uh, today um, we have the pleasure of having two uh, researchers and scientists. Um, one is an Italian one, uh, Filiberto Altobelli, who is an agronomist and research uh, scientist that works in an Italian research institute called CREA. And, um, and uh, we have uh, Olivier Barotto, who is a senior water scientist in INRAE, who is, which is a, a French uh, research uh, institution. So um, we are uh, extremely pleased to have you all with us. And I would like to now give the floor to, uh, to, to Filiberto to, to start his presentation. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you uh, everybody. Thank you for uh, inviting me on this uh, very interesting um, seminar. Um, it's very my, my pleasure to, to be here. And um, I'm uh, Filiberto Tobelli, I'm a researcher and um, agronomist. And my topic of research, main topic of research is agricultural water management and um, also another resource in the agriculture, in, in, in agriculture sector. And um, my contribution to this, uh, to this webinar is um, about the, the um, and, and policy, a policy in, in, uh, speech regarding the, in, the topic of ag uh, agricultural water management and, um, and um, also the aspect of the uh, water energy food nexus at uh, EU level. Um, so in this way, uh, I start my presentation and um, uh, as you know, climate smart agriculture is an approach that helps to guide action needed to the transform and reorient agriculture system to effectively support the local and ensure food security in a changing climate. Um, at this regard, uh, we have to support inclusion of climate smart water management approach at all levels, from farms to national policies and legislation. This new approach is very important for the uh, new idea of, of the uh, climate in relation to the uh, water management. And Fao on this topic, uh, I work a lot and uh, we are um, engaged on this topic as a, a research center and academy um, for um, carry out our experience. <clears throat> Weather management and climate change are aspects that are very interlinked at this stage, at this moment. Uh, as you know, impacts of climate change, of the availability of fresh water resources for agriculture and the overall context in which water is managed in agriculture. The major impact on climate change in agriculture is expected to result from its effect on the water cycle and consequently on the availability of the fresh water resource. But the role that climate change will play with regard to water in agriculture must be considered in the context of rapidly increasing water with walls, degradation of water quality, and competition for 
at all levels. Just in the past 50 years, the extent of global irrigated land has more than doubled, increasing from 116 to 330 million hectares. Globally, agricultural water withdrawals represent 70% of all withdrawals and as much as 19% in some area countries. But irrigation has been a key factor in the intensification of agricultural production, enabling agricultural output more than two triple over, over the same period to meet higher demand for food, fiber, and other agricultural product. Climate change impact on water resources, yes, and uh, in this regard, availability of renewable surface water and groundwater resource, fluids, drought, steam flow, seasonality, water quality, biodiversity, and ecosystem service, and sea level. But uh, climate change affected each step of water cycle, we know, with the negative impact on water quantity and quality, both time and space. The strong impact of climate change on water resource for agriculture will affect agricultural production. Reduce yields in many areas and increase the vulnerability of poor rural farmers, especially in arid and semi arid areas. But uh, what is uh, water energy food nexus, and especially in Europe, and the region, the region where we uh, work uh, in particular? Um, the main thing is very important to uh, well understand. Uh, is a very well understand who is the uh, nexus at the EU level. Uh, the sustainable natural resource management under economic, environmental, and social prospect needs to be assessed based on a fair balance between the use and the availability of resources. In agriculture, such an assessment must consider the main contents on global trends, aspect of global population in terms of impact of food production, decreasing availability of natural resources such as, as a soil and water, a, a productive input, of course, and increase the GAG emission related to climate change. In this framework, um, sorry, uh, in this framework, stakeholders play an important role in assessing the water energy food nexus. This approach suggests that sustainably driving strategies at the whole levels, global to regional to local, must be planned and implemented, considering and assessing the linkage between water use and availability, energy consumption and source, land use and food progression. Stakeholders play an important role in assessing the water food energy nexus, as many policy choices affect the possibility to make use of environmental goods and ecosystem service. But uh, assessing the water energy food nexus uh, is important when we uh, think about uh, one of these of, of the components uh, that in this case are food production needs. And in this sense, food production needs different kinds of inputs. Human in terms of labor time management administration, socioeconomics in terms of money, government institution participation, natural sunlight, soil, water, wine, petroleum, gas, and the human made in terms of electricity, alternative water, machinery, agrochemical resource. Water is a part of this nexus and agriculture uses, as you know, what uses water from different sources, green water, the rain filter into the soil and the agro crops, and blue water, including surface water from rivers and lakes and groundwater from aquifer. To make blue water and water generated from alternative resources, Desalization, reuse, available to crop is necessary to spend energy, both direct as fluid consumption, electricity for pumping, and indirect fertilizer, pesticide, seeds, and reduce in agriculture requires again uh, water. But in this term, sustainable agriculture goal is a tool to implement innovation tools and service capacity able to optimize input management, energy nutrients in water, and productivity of intensive systems, with a vision of bringing sustainable crop production with fair economic competitiveness. At EU level, 
in a business as usual scenario, by 2030, the water energy food demand is expected to increase by 2030. Based on this projection, achieving universal access to food, drinking water, and modern energy within the planetary boundaries can be considered the main challenge on our society. Of course, this requires considering interconnection, the vulnerability and the fitness of natural resources within the policy and the regulatory framework, the government planning mechanism, the production process and the consumption partners. But uh, understanding the nexus is not all. We also consider considering the water energy food nexus as concept described as uh, the complex and detailed natural of global resources. At this regard, when we are speaking about the water energy food nexus, the concept is a, is a conceptual approach developed to better understand and systematically analyze the interaction between the natural environment and human activities and to work toward a more coordinated management and use of natural resources across sector and scales. This can contribute to identify and manage trade-off and to build the synergy to our responses, allowing for more integrated and cost-effective planning decision-making, implementation, monitoring, and evaluation. Since the Bonn Conference organized in preparation for Rio 20 Summit provided evidence that improved weather, energy, and food security can be achieved to a nexus approach. The nexus approach can also support the transition towards a green economy, which aims among other things, at resource use efficiency and greater policy coherence. Nexus approach is becoming a key tool um, for water scarcity of water and other resources, climate change, degradation of resource base and water energy and food security. Relating, regarding to water, uh, the scarcity of water and land and other resources, <laughs> we have to um, well understand that scarcity of resources is rapidly escalating, escalating due to increasing the land, resource degradation and pollution. By 20, 2015, agricultural production will have to grow by another 60% and agricultural land will have to explain by about 10% globally by 20 in developing countries and by 30 in Latin America. Even the most uh, optimistic scenario of improving productivity to technology development still project an increase in agricultural water demand of at least 20% by 2050. Climate change, another aspect, is uh, an variability at future pressure by challenging degradation of dry lands, reducing glacier water storage, increasing frequency and intensity of extended event, and decrease the delivery water supply, as well as reliable and simple agricultural productivity. At the same time, climate adaptation measures such as intensification irrigation or water desalization are often energy intensive. But uh, it is not all. Also, degradation of the resource base is an important aspect. Growing demand of natural resources and daily insustainable management have increased the human ecological footprint and caused the degradation of the natural resource base in many regions, including several modifications of the ecosystem. Water, energy, and food security are aspects important in this sense. Resource limitation as a whole sector requires movement toward increased resource use efficiency, demand management, and more sustainable consumption partners. The third point regarding the nexus is a synergy between water, energy, and agriculture in the European policy framework. At this stage, uh, we have three main aspects uh, that regard energy, agriculture, and water policies. Regarding the energy policies, uh, um, just some aspects are important to underline. Over the past two decades, reducing energy consumption, improving energy efficiency, and promoting production from renewable resources have become more and more important. Energy efficiency is at the heart of the European strategies to boost the transition to a resource efficient economy, cardinal principle, European 2020 strategy. But Europe is definitely boosting energy policy, and it is shown by the fact that it the, in the Climate Energy Pact, known as EU 2020 goals, 
the first target set for 2020 or primary energy saving of 20% through energy efficiency. If energy targets will be achieve, economic analysts talk about 16 billion euro on import on oil and gas that could be saved by 2020, and uh, 600 million jobs in, term in the UE by boosting innovation technology sector. But uh, in this context, it's very important uh, con uh, considering also the renewable energy sector as a typical example of this process, driving the green growth of EU economies, reducing environmental impact and generating positive social economy effect mainly on occupation. Such sector affect particularly agriculture in a positive way, allowing farmers to reuse waste and optimize soup products for bioenergy production. In this framework, agriculture policies play a key role in supporting farmers. Other blocks is related to the agriculture policies. In this term, in Europe, we have a very good tools that the second pillar of, um, of a common agriculture policy. Um, CAP provides specific measures, including national rural development plans at, at the national level, supporting the production and the use of renewable energy in agriculture as well as energy efficiency. Also, CAP does not provide direct support for the production of biomass for bioenergy, but other indirect measures. It makes it viable a set of instruments to boot up bioenergy production, ranging from investment to physical access to support of basic service and village renewable in Europe. Areas. To ensure I'm a helping actor in the agriculture and forest sector to work together, such as farm, forest, urban, and business organization. But uh, um, other aspects are important and more generally at the global scale, whether it's strictly linked with energy production, also uh, because traditional thermoelectric plants will carry massive amount of water for cooling. That's why the additional energy consumption, as well as use of alternative energy source, must be well connected with the water policy, mainly to with the Water Framework Directive 2016, that is the main um, uh, legislative uh, tool at the European level on for water for preserving water resource. In this regard, the other block, third blocks of policies regarding water. In this sense, the European water legislation has been uh, deeply transformed with the water, food, water framework directly that they enacted in 2000 and went into full operation in 2012, uh, becoming a one of the main environmental legislation. In response to the environmental goals of the USDGs in relation to water use and water ecosystem protection. Its objective is to achieve the good ecological status of water bodies in the EU for 2027 and maintain and promote sustainable water use in long term perspective. On the other hand, the uh, water, water um, framework directive social economic component that seeks to encourage cost recovery for all water service can strongly affect the agricultural sector. In fact, in the water uh, framework directive is fully implemented to co recover all water related costs. Water tariff will receive considerable housing water use reduction and inflicting substantial losses to farm income. The application of water framework directive means question the availability of certain irrigation areas in many Europe region. So, some conclusion about this uh, uh, brief speech is uh, regarding the very important aspect that the water energy food taxes are uh, in, in interlinking uh, uh, understanding and approach. The water energy food nexus means that uh, water security, energy security, and the food security are linked and interact with each other and with the environment. Under this approach, the sustainability of natural resource management must be assessed by taking into account the fire balance between the uses and the availability of those resources. In agricultural analysis, must, must consider the main contains of global trend as we grow the global population. Consumption water, energy, and food that we also increase, placing stress on these three sectors and raising the importance of the water energy food nexus. So finally, the renewable energy system plays an important role in irrigation management and more especially in water pumping. Water resource 
are among the most valuable resources of the natural environment and their sustainability and integrated management is at the basis of the European water policy. With the adoption of the Weather Framework Directive, UA policy has undergone a process of restructuring. The water, um, food, the, the water, um, water Framework Directive is supplemented by international agreements and legislation related to water quantity, quality, and pollution. In, in Europe and Italy, is, and uh, as well, is very important. And uh, many of our work are uh, related to the uh, well um, support the uh, directive at national level, but not solo in Italy, in Europe, of course. Okay, thank you so much for this for your attention. Um, I'm really uh, appreciate and uh, I mean uh, for future uh, question and. Um, Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Filiberto. And uh, while uh, Olivier will take the floor, please have a look at the questions that uh, the different participants has posed. Because after uh, Olivier's presentation, you will be given the chance to answer some of these questions. And then Olivier will also have some time afterwards to answer uh, uh, the questions that are more related to his presentation. So without any further ado, uh, Olivier, you have the floor. Uh, you have uh, about 20 minutes. Thank you. Thanks. Um, thanks to Christina um, for inviting me um, to this webinar. I'm Olivier Barotto uh, from, uh, I'm from Montpellier from a joint research unit on water governance. Um, I am myself from INRAE, uh, but it's a research, I'm leading this research group with people from different institutes. Uh, some of them you may know. And um, I think my, my talk will complete quite well um, uh, Filiberto's one. Uh, I will go maybe more at, the, at a more local scale and on how um, um, adaptation to climate change uh, may take place and and what can happen afterwards if we try to check what are the consequences of this adaptation and some uh, cascade or side effects. So um, if we look at agriculture facing climate change, uh, there is different type of events, uh, Filiberto mentioned them. For example, here it's just close to where I live in Montpellier in South of France. Uh, some flood issues. Uh, we also have some sea level rise and coastal erosion issues, uh, which will affect uh, agriculture, uh, making some um, uh, wasting some some crops or also uh, wasting some lands for salt intrusion. Uh, drought, of course, is another uh, aspect of uh, climate change, uh, which impact a lot agriculture. Uh, here is uh, this is in Morocco. And these um, three uh, three crops uh, are being totally dry, uh, dried out, uh, close to Marrakesh, I think. Pest management is also uh, an issue uh, related to climate change because uh, new pests are uh, emerging uh, due to changing climate, and farmers are not uh, used to deal with them. Um, there are some changes in energy access. Uh, so here it's a just a Put this, this picture because I, I like it. Um, but when you make available new energy, uh, you change the way people can take water. And when, for example, when you bring um, solar pumps, uh, it's easier to, to pump water. And you may uh, behind um, positive action to to have, uh, to use um, solar energy, uh, you may uh, decrease um, the, the water levels. And last point related to climate change is the development of ag agriculture. Um, climate change uh, push, pushes uh, governments uh, to think about big water transfers, like this one in Brazil. We have also some, some in Europe, so in, in everywhere, everywhere in the world. And, and this changed quite a lot the availability of water for farmers. Uh, some of them getting more. Um, like, for example, uh, there is one in South of France from Rhone River to the to all the, the western um, coast uh, along the, the Mediterranean Sea. Um, here, uh, you, there is more water for farmers along the coast, 
uh, but for, uh, the farmers a little bit more upstream now um, can't have the same conditions to crop. So um, I will go through some examples uh, of these um, types of climate change and how agriculture may uh, deal with them and, and on the consequences. So uh, first point, I will take an example related to flood um, and with um, the issue of cascade effects. Um, this is a word from a former PhD student of my group, David Nortes Martinez. Um, he looked at uh, the impact of flood on farming. On the left, you have a situation which is one which is the most um, often taken in, in account uh, when assessing the images, um, you look at uh, the, the white dots, the small white dots uh, at the plot level. What are the consequences at the plot level? And if you take, um, and if a flood occurs, uh, for example, in fall, late fall, uh, the plot may be uh, empty, so you can measure just hardly any damage. But these plots, these fields are part of, of, of a form. Of, of a form. And if you, so it's the middle one. If you consider the relation between the field and the farm, you have also to consider the impact on the farm infrastructures. For example, the, the machines, um, uh, or they uh, may have been damaged during the flood event. And so that will impact the possibility to, to make the, the, the following cropping season. And then if you go on the right side, um, the farm is itself embedded in a network, in a, in the whole sector uh, network. And if I take the example of, um, of winery, which is the most common one, um, the most common crop around Montpellier, um, if you, uh, there is a cooperative uh, who is dealing with, um, with a crop of farmers. And if the cooperative is damaged by the flood, if the, the building of the cooperative is damaged by the flood, then um, the damages may, may um, Calculate uh, towards the farms, even if they have not been damaged themselves. On the other hand, the, the cooperative may be um, a place for solidarity, and if one farm is as is um, um, uh, machinery is uh, damaged, uh, through the cooperative, um, farmers may find solutions. So that's important when thinking of. Um, um, adaptation to climate change for farms to think of them uh, at this, uh, within these networks. And uh, this um, PhD student uh, assessed that uh, the difference in the damages, uh, in the assessment of damages, may be as high as 40% if you take in account full interactions or not. Uh, cascade effects can al may also come from uh, um, other adaptations. And uh, among those, um, uh, there is the over overflooding of agricultural land when cities want to protect uh, inhabitants. Uh, one option is to overflood the, the lands for of farmers, and the question then is how uh, farmers are, are compensated for that. And again, if you consider only the impacts on the field at the field level, you may um, forget quite a lot um, of, um, of, the, of the impacts. Another issue is more linked to sea level rise and um, strategic retreat, um, which uh, force um, some activities uh, on the seashore to go back um, inland. And where are they going when they go back inland? They go rather on farming land. So um, climate change may also indirectly impact on the, on the land, which is accessible for farmers. So this was, this was one example. Now I will take another example uh, talking about flood uh, and how people adapt to flood. And what I want to, to focus on with this example is that adaptation uh, to climate change uh, has to be understood like a complex issue. Here on the corn, um, the corn field on the, the, on the left of the, the slide, uh, the drought is assessed by farmers uh, according to the situation of the crop itself. On the top picture, um, you can see uh, a river uh, quite dried. And here, the, um, the drought is assessed by fishermen, uh, like uh, how much water is still in the river so that fish uh, can live. And on the right, you have um, a formal map from the French administration, um, which is uh, 
updated uh, regularly during summer um, with um, different level of drought of, situ of a situation. And this is the way the administration see the drought. It's um, comparison to thresholds. So with these different views on what is drought, farmers uh, and farmers and stakeholders um, come with a diversity of propositions. Uh, these propositions may deal with um, of, with the crops themselves, trying to find out some um, more suited cultivars for new climate. Administration can come with um, with plans uh, uh, to, to to fight climate change, and so, so how in the longer term to invest for this. And these investments may uh, induce, for example, here uh, it's also close to Montpellier, um, a big uh, a big pipe. Uh, Taking water from the Rhone River to uh, bring it for farmers along along the, along the seashore, and also at the farmer level, um, the development of irrigation is seen like a way to to deal with, with drought, bringing water to the plant, so the plant won't be dried out anymore. And finally, another solution which is proposed is to work on the on the technologies. Here it's uh, changing the, the technique for of irrigation from um, a sprinkler irrigation to towards um, drop irrigation. Uh, but the question is for all of these propositions: um, how efficient are they, and how efficient? This is a question which has to be handled at various uh, with various point of views and with various scales. Um, because there is diversity of, fr of framing. What um, we talk about in my group is we, we are talking about social hydrological systems. And what is it? Uh, still uh, taking an example from close to my place, um, uh, there, there is a river basin, the Orb River, uh, which is uh, circled with black. Um, and this is the logical scale for hydrologists. Uh, from my background, I'm going from hydrology and then I'll turn to, to a social simulation. But for an hydrologist, the, the right um, scale to assess um, the, the adaptation to drought and, and water management will be the river basin. However, uh, if we look um, here on this picture, you have another basin here, uh, which, is, which is the Aero, Aero River Basin, another one on the south. And there is this one, uh, which is uh, also uh, under the sea, uh, which is a basin linked to groundwater. Uh, with, with the big groundwater uh, crossing the, these three basins, uh, Orb, Aero, and, and Orb. And on, on top of that, you have the purple one, this one, which is the um, uh, urban area of Béziers, uh, the, the larger urban area. And this, um, uh, this level um, has decision uh, on, water, on, on policies which affect um, Water, water availability. And so they can uh, change land use patterns, they can change, um, uh, they can subsidize some activities. So there will be change uh, in the way water is used at this level. In addition, um, this basin level is not meaningful if we uh, look at um, two exchanges between people. There are more exchanges uh, between people from Béziers to Montpellier or to Narbonne, the big cities and, uh, along, along the sea, um, where are the big economic links. And activities, economic activities may shift from one place to another one, and so um, some constraints for water. Uh, other exchanges are related to water directly with exchanges of water between basins. So I mentioned one uh, big pipe coming from there, the Rhone River, to here. But there are already some transfers from this basin to this one. And a last type of interactions uh, here in the, the upper valley, the agricultural practices are um, culturally uh, embedded. And this uh, is a discussion and this evolved at the level of this area, of the upper, upper, upper basin of the, all these um, river basins, not uh, taking into account what takes place here. So, the assess assessment of efficiency of any uh, measures for adapting water management to climate change 
have to be uh, assessed within a special frame, which is difficult to, to know. Uh, so this is open systems with blurred boundaries. And so which policy arena? It is really a question which we have to deal with when uh, having a policy to, to deal with the water, water adaptation for, for farming. Because multiplicity, there are multiple interests. I just mentioned farmers and fishermen, there are many of us. So that means there might be ambiguity in evaluation criteria. What is dry for a farmer is not what is dry for a fisherman. And so there's a need for consistent tools to, to monitor, pilot, explore, to, to, to know quite well, and with the time changing uh, the situation of water, and to have for that a robust participatory settings. And these solutions, these propositions to be assessed are also challenged by intensification of global changes, not only climate, but global changes. Uh, climate and urbanization, um, taking um, uh, land from, from farming, so pushing farmers to intensify on the land which is left. A new demand for food or energy, uh, which will impact on, on quantity and quality. Some technical changes, new practices, new varieties available. Uh, changes in access to resources, through connections, same picture, but also new type of resource like uh, desalinated water or treated wastewater reuse. Uh, new information availability, like uh, all what takes place with big data and connected objects. Here, here it is a pump, uh, which might be uh, connected to internet, uh, so that um, the water, manage water manager can better uh, handle um, where water is sent. Also, uh, various institutional tools, like insurance systems, or um, some ways to value more the, um, uh, the products like a protected origin uh, so that uh, farmers don't need uh, the security of water to have uh, the highest um, possible um, yield. I will now take an example uh, uh, with a uh, drip irrigation in, uh, in Morocco. Uh, so that's work did by colleagues of mine um, who were outposted there. Um, so drip irrigation, there is um, strong expectations for water saving because we bring only the, the water which is uh, really needed by the plant. Uh, the idea is that there is lower water consumption, so there will be less groundwater depletion. Um, but there is an issue of efficiency. Um, what are the farmers' um, objectives and practices uh, with these um, uh, new, new techniques? And the, so the question for us was whether it was suitable to outscale from the lab where we can see that uh, we use less water with drip irrigation to a whole agricultural region. And the work of um, Van der Kooi, uh, Saskia Van der Kooi, who did a PhD on that uh, a few years ago, that there was no evidence of benefits uh, because there was a use of surplus water for intensification and so a continuous decline of water tables. The fact is that the water saved at field level is not saved at regional level because there is more, um, there will be more um, areas uh, irrigated. So the issue here was that um, the, the allocation of saved water had not been handled. We brought in a, a technical solution, which was good at the level of field, but which was the consequences at the regional level were not um, dealt with. And so it, is, it may be considered like efficient because one, um, the same quantity of water could produce maybe more food, but it was not efficient at the level of the basin. We can look at also same kind of example in other countries. Um, the idea is to, to assess um, the, the impact of um, modernization of irrigation at the basin level, uh, at the regional level, at the, for example, at the basin level, and not at the field level. If we, and the measurement at one scale or the other, change totally um, the conclusion of this, um, of this assessment. So um, for those who want to know about, more about that, there was a very good report from Chris Perry, uh, published by FAO, and then it's been turned by Quentin Grafton, um, in paper in science, uh, with examples from different, from, uh, various countries in the world, including Egypt and Australia. The idea is that um, the water um, uh, 
when you use a, a sprinkler uh, to irrigate fields, there is some runoff, uh, there is some return flows into the river. If you decrease um, the water which is brought with drip irrigation, just bring in the, the water which is needed for the plot, there is no more um, return flows, but the water which is uh, evaporated is still the same. So that means when the, the, in, in dry period, um, there is no more water coming uh, back to the river and the river is even more dried out than it was uh, before the, the modernization. So the, when we see the, all the complexity of, of, the, of these different, different viewpoints to assess the efficiency of, of water management uh, facing climate change, um, we see that we need um, specific arenas able to gather the suitable people um, with um, meaning uh, arenas meaningful to handle multiple scales and viewpoints, um, able to handle flex flexible um, flexibility regarding the stakes introduced and uh, to the different flows, not only um, uh, the main flows but also written flows or, or indirect flows which may take place and and also having tools to explore scenarios. Here if this is um, the pictures here are in southeast of France uh, in the Alps um, with a, a drought committee uh, so people uh, in place to handle the, the drought uh, during summer when there is a new crisis and the farmers on the left uh, when they talk in this committee they have uh, this in mind the, the irrigation, while on the, on the right, this is fishermen uh, who drive out the river and what is dry, dried. And so the, the need is to, uh, to find out a way to handle this kind of, of arenas so that they can uh, be adaptive and include more people if uh, at some moment uh, new stakes happen, and also that they are able to deal with different viewpoints on, for assessing um, the solutions. So the propositions which are developed in, in my group um, by Nice Ferrand and colleagues are um, gathered within a, a, a platform named Couplage. Uh, you can uh, we have a link uh, on the slide here, um, which is um, uh, a, a set of different stages to prepare um, uh, participatory settings for common joint diagnostics, uh, role-playing games to explore scenarios, um, common definitions of, of values and, and preferences, and finally, um, joint uh, elaborations of plans. Uh, each step um, is potentially framing the following one, and so there's a need of, of tools to involve stakeholders at each, um, each of them. That's what that's on, we are working on. And there is a need, which is in the center, of con for continuous monitoring so that we can identify the evolution of a process and to have reflexi to have um, some reflexivity on in internal validity. What I mean by, by that is um, it's quite easy, um, it's relatively easy to find a solution between a, within a group of people, let's say farmers and fishermen, if it impacts mainly a third category of people who are not present. So if, um, when I speak about internal validity, but the solutions which may come, up, of, uh, come from this type of, um, of, of arenas have to be checked uh, towards the principle of whether the solutions, people impacted by this solution have been involved in. And this is very important when we have the nexus uh, that Filiberto mentioned uh, presented in mind, because there are all these connected policies uh, which has to be, um, and so in time, uh, these cycles can uh, um, be changed and it is important because at each cycle, um, we may find out a new issue to focus on. This is a quite rather old example from colleagues of mine in uh, Cecil Barno and Guy Treville in Thailand, um, where they use a game and at each uh, time for, from the game, from the, this um, and the elaboration of um, a solution of uh, about specific problems they had in the northern Thailand, they, they, they pointed out a new issue which uh, generated a new cycle. Finally, uh, we'll just uh, come with um, 
a last example of game uh, to deal with multi-scale interdependencies. As I mentioned, um, there is this multi-scale issue, and um, which is also uh, uh, possible to handle uh, with this type of, of, of settings. Here, for example, it's um, in the south uh, in the south of France. Uh, four autonomous tables uh, have to coordinate. So, with these different tables, we can uh, simulate um, the fact that in different places, among different places, people don't really communicate. They have to focus on some activities. Uh, here, they were related to infrastructure. Um, they have to focus on these activities, and so they they don't even think of dealing with the others while they know they are connected and they are connected by water. And so uh, what we did with this game, but we forced them to have some direct, direct arenas with sub representatives so that at the end of the game, they can um, um, understand better what is the added value of having these um, direct, direct arenas. Uh, so this is the setting of the game, I won't go through it. So uh, I think my time is uh, over. Uh, so some take home messages. Um, what is important uh, when dealing with uh, water management for agriculture facing climate change is that there is diversity of sources of vulnerability. Uh, so don't focus only on drought or only on flood or because the way uh, you handle one, you, you, you handle them will impact the way you can handle uh, other processes. Um, another point important uh, for me, what I would like you to keep in mind, that context matters. Um, there are cascade effects, there are feedback loops. So what you do to um, uh, improve efficiency of water use, to be more resilient uh, towards the climate change, will impact your capacity uh, to, your, to, to deal with further, um, further impacts of climate change or for other your neighbors uh, to deal with climate change. Um, the good thing is tools are emerging um, for participatory settings and to support policy analytics, um, which may help uh, to, to deal with uh, all this mess. Uh, but for these tools, there's a need for reflexivity and um, to consider that agricultural vulnerability management is a continuous open process. It, we have to, to forget the idea that we could find out the good way and then it will be stable. But it's will all, due to complexity of system to all this interconnectivity, it's always a continuous open process to deal with other sectors. Thanks. And I'm open to your question now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Olivier. Uh, this was a really very, very interesting. And I think also the, the new methods are quite innovative. So uh, it was interesting. I would like to give the floor to uh, Filiberto to answer uh, a few of the questions. And meanwhile, in the background, uh, here you have uh, the list of courses that could be of interest to you that are directly related with, the, with the, the thematic area that we were covering today, therefore water management and climate uh, smart agriculture. So Filiberto, if you want to answer a few of the questions, uh, yes. just for participants, I also wanted to let you know that we will be preparing a document with all the answers to your questions, and it will be available uh, through the FL eLearning Academy on the webinar section. So you will be able to have access to the recording as well as to the answers of, of the um, uh, that, that, that have been asked. So, Filiberto? Yes, thank you. Um, thank you for... Um... A lot of questions that I just read on the on the section, um, and uh, of course I I, I cannot re reply of all of these uh, questions, but uh, uh, some of these are very interesting, and um, uh, I want to uh, reply about two two um, two of these that um, I I can I can imagine that uh, uh, is useful also for other. Uh, questions that are similar to these topics. Uh, one of the the questions is related to the to the um, concrete example of um, uh, uh, application on, on water management uh, and the climate smart agriculture. And um, in this sense, uh, uh, the measurement that uh, the action that uh, we can uh, um, <clears throat> 
use in this context are, um, are uh, often are uh, related to the uh, adaptation uh, to the uh, to climate smart uh, cl adaptation um, measurement to uh, face the um, the problem related to the lacks of water in uh, um, agricultural field and um, so the potential option for uh, for climate change adaptation could be several um, in particular um, if we consider in this sense of uh, the land and water and crop management uh, so the aspect that uh, are very linked to the agriculture water management um, we can consider the uh, um, for example uh, different option uh, at field and farm level um, we can um, put in action action as improved soil most retention and capacity um, changing crop in part and then its diversification, another important aspect. Adapting cropping, for example, um, calendar, supplementary irrigation, deficit irrigation, um, alternate wet and dry rice production system, for example, um, rice, as you know, is a very um, intensive, intensive uh, crop production. But uh, also introduce drought resistant crops, um, always at farm level, but uh, and also protection against soil erosion. If we, we move uh, and we uh, face this aspect in terms of the irrigation scheme, schemes, um, the measurement that we, the option measurement, the action that we could get in consideration are related to the. Uh, also in this case, also at irrigation schemes level, um, supplementary irrigation, deficit irrigation, um, irrigation scheme, operation improvement are very important spec aspect that uh, help us to um, adaptation the um, strategies on agriculture water management. But um, we consider also other option um also other uh, option um at uh, watershed or river basin in this sense uh, aspect as a uh, and uh, option as a uh, integrated water resource management uh, as a very important tool that consider the uh, also the cover also the um climate um smart getting consideration the climate smart um, agriculture and this sense also the water management um, but also, um, as al always at the river basin, the, um, the good use, the attention in use on, on, uh, on groundwater resources that uh, al always are, um, in some cases, are um, deep uh, uh, used for the irrigation, and in some cases, too much. Um, if we uh, analyze the aspect in terms of the policies, um, we could consider other aspect. And uh, in terms of policies, in terms of the um, irrigation advisor service that are whole, uh, hopefully at, uh, into the, the uh, regional uh, service, uh, uh, agriculture service, um, are, um, for example, improved water for existing capacity is a very important aspect that to face the, 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 the contribution to the water management and uh, also um, improved monitoring uh, early warning system, another tool that, very, that is very important at, uh, at, at, uh, at uh, um, river basin level and can help to mitigate the effect of the uh, climate change. Um, this is one of the questions, uh, the, the, the answers to the, uh, as a replay to one of the, the, the question. Uh, another question is, uh, and uh, on this I will be very short, is uh, does the current situation in COVID-19 impact directly on food security and nexus in general? Um, in Europe, 
Uh, the uh, answer is yes, of course, and uh, uh, we uh, are uh, in all, all the world uh, well understand how is important the manage at the local scale also in terms of irrigation because um, one is, is uh, uh, as in this case is not possible um, go across the countries or there are a lot of limitation also in uh, in uh, the de developed the countries but also in developing countries this could be a very good problem for the uh, food security and uh, life security uh, this regard the uh, activities that are concentrated in at field farm level and also in a, um, at a river basin level, international contexts are very important to face the uh, eventual problem that we have to um, face in this case uh, related to the pandemic. So um, I encourage uh, the, the all uh, uh, the scientists and um, policy to well understand how it's important to uh, work at local scale and share knowledge among pilot areas and uh, a nation for improving the uh, irrigation uh, schemes and irrigation uh, practice to face uh, um, some problem of course and for um, for um, make sure the uh, uh, food security at local level. Thank you. Sorry, Christina, you're muted. Uh, can you please activate your microphone? Ah, uh, yes, sorry. Yes, yes. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, so now, um, thank you very much. Um, uh, Filiberto and uh, Olivier, did you have a chance to look at some of the questions to give uh, some answers to the participants? Yes, um, I, pick up, I picked up a few of them. Um, some of them are very uh, difficult to answer and will necessitate, I think, a whole webinar. Um, um, I will start with the easy, easiest one for me, which is uh, a term which, has, I, which is on my slide and, and I didn't develop it because I thought I was short of time, but Encore MEP, uh, which is the way, um, uh, which was on the slide on, uh, on couplage, uh, Encore MEP is a, it's actually, MEP is for method for evaluating uh, participatory uh, policies, uh, part, um, public policies, something like that. Uh, so it's, a, it's just the name of a, of a method to, to evaluate. What is important is in the, is in the Encore, um, it's, because it's, it's um, all the, all the letters are here to to explain how uh, we evaluate uh, the dimension of, of assessment, which has to be. Um, I, I won't go through all the letters here, but um, uh, it um, includes the impact impacts on um, on the issue, um, but also um, the, the normative uh, consequences, how people, um, have, and also the, the issue of justice. So. It is important to have an evaluation which is um, uh, multidimensional, uh, not only on impact on the water system itself, not only on the yield it itself, but also on uh, on the social uh, aspects. Uh, if you want to know, I saw some uh, asking for um, uh, modules in French. Uh, for that, I have some good news. Um, I'm sorry, uh, I did it in, in English, why it's not my first language either. Um, I have good news for you. There's a MOOC, um, a massive online course, uh, which is uh, sponsored by Agrinium uh, about this uh, method on uh, participatory processes. Uh, the name of the MOOC is Tero and Co. Um, you will find the link if you go to the couplage uh, link, which was on my slide, or I can then, uh, I can also, Send it to you by email afterwards. Um, so, um, and this MOOC is um, uh, at, at least in French, uh, and I guess it's also, and I'm sure it's also in, in other languages. Um, now, uh, there was a question on the uh, role of governance and participation to improve access to water, energy, and food. Um, what is important? Of, uh, I, I will answer rather on the participation side. What is important is to have in mind that um, 
it is um, not possible, or we can bet it's, it's not possible uh, to improve access to water point or was access to energy or access to food by itself. Any uh, participatory process um, will tend to focus on only one of these letters, uh, but um, will uh, the, the work of um, facilitation uh, and that's the link with governance is to keep in mind that these three sectors and also we can add to this biodiversity, uh, all these sectors uh, are connected. So when improving access to one of them, um, always keep in mind what are what will be the consequences to the other sectors. And uh, so this is work of, uh, of governance and to have part, um, participatory process, which are really helpful and not just um, by finding rather easy solutions, but which may only uh, lead to tensions. Another question was related to drip irrigation, um, considered uh, more valuable and high value crop and whether um, uh, government could invest on these new techniques. Um, one of my objectives with uh, this talk is to keep in mind that, te that uh, in technolog technological inno innovations um, are not good or bad just by themselves. It really depends on what is the institutional institutional arrangements around uh, which will make them um, valuable or not. And if a government uh, in, invests uh, on drip irrigation, just on drip irrigation, uh, like it was made, for example, in Morocco, um, that may lead to problems, uh, or like it was made also in Australia, uh, it was one of my examples, uh, that may lead uh, to, to an issue uh, because um, what will take place, uh, there is some safe water, safe volume, and there is a negotiation uh, from between farmers and government. Okay, we um, we make an effort, uh, so we share our, our part of, the, of this investment in drip irrigation, uh, but we want to have uh, more um, water allocated uh, in, in, as a consequence, because let's say there is um, uh, 50 percent um, uh, saved, uh, which is quite a lot actually, uh, 50 percent saved. Uh, let's say that on this 50 percent, uh, 20 percent is redistributed to farmers uh, because they've done an effort. And the negotiation is, look, there is still 30 percent uh, going back to, um, the, to the river. Uh, so that's uh, still better off than before. But when uh, a big drought uh, takes place, um, the rights, the water rights, the water allocation right are difficult to renegotiate. So what will be uh, disappearing first is the 30% which were left to the river. That's the first point. The second point is that um, all these new techniques are quite often difficult to, to maintain. And um, the, the, the increase in efficiency of water use uh, decreases with time. And that means um, that um, the water which was supposed to be saved is less and less saved. And what the, it's all also on the 30 persons which were uh, left for the river uh, that um, the, the, the lost will, will take place. So I think um, I answered a few questions. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. So um, thank you very much. So this is very good, Olivier, to, to uh, inform the participants about the MOOC that you were mentioning. This is, it could be very interesting. At the same time, I wanted to mention that the courses that you see listed here are also available in French and Spanish, and sometimes also some of them, I think, also in Arabic. Um, and uh, I also wanted to mention that we have uh, uh, these two courses on the uh, SDG indicators. One is change in water use efficiency over time, and the other one is the level of water stress. This could be also very, very interesting for you because it explains also how countries can assess their, their basically uh, their, their water, their, their water stocks, etc. And then we have uh, on the left hand side, you have the ones that are related to climate smart agriculture. 
So we would really uh, advise you to have a look first at the introduction. And then uh, there's the one on water management, but also this one is very interesting on climate smart soils and land management, which is highly related also to, to water. So uh, these are the ones we, uh, uh, that are related to the webinar today, but we invite you to go on the academy and to, and to have a look at what is available. Uh, we would, I would like to, um, to thank our speakers today. Uh, thank you very much, Olivier and Filiberto. I would like to thank also uh, Fabio Picinic for the organization and also Aristide Bucare. Uh, our partners, UNSCAP and Agrinium, and of course, all of you, the participants, thank you very much for your, participating, for, for your participation. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.